Okay, today we're going to look into how to kneel and how to bow formally in Aikido. You have to know that there are many ways to do things in traditional martial arts. Uh, what I'm going to show you is one way to do, but by no means uh, is it the way to do. Okay? Uh, the more you know about martial arts, about many different martial arts and different schools, the more you realize that there are many ways to do things. This is one of those. And I'm going to explain to you why I do those things. So we're going to start by just standing like this. The way you stand is like heels together and the feet a little bit less than 90 degrees apart from each other. The hands have to be along the body like this. The back straight and your buttocks should be closed. The idea is that your head is being pulled um, in the sky like this, so nice and straight. The hands are along the body. Now, what you may see is that in some pictures of the old masters, they may show their hands like this, which for people who do striking arts, it may look a little bit uh, strange because this is the way you taught not to punch, but this is not to, for punching. This is actually here a pose which uh, I've been told was here to uh, protect your thumbs because if somebody was to grab your thumb, they would have control over your entire body. So you can see some old masters standing like this with the thumbs inside the hands. Uh, it could also potentially be a protection against cutting the thumb if somebody was to uh, come and attack you. We are going to stand just like this. We are not going to do this. We're going to stand like that, okay? Because in Aikido, we are in a Gendai Budo, so we don't need that safety measure. Now, how do you get on your knees from that position? It's quite easy. You're gonna take your left leg back, like this, not too far back, and you're going to go down on your left knee. Left, right, and then on your knees. Okay, so I start again. Ideally, imagine you've got something on top of your head and you don't want that to fall off your head. So you need to go down straight. So left knee, straight down, and then on the knees like this. Okay, that's for kneeling. The reason why you bend your left leg first is that when you're in that position, if you have a sword with that leg down, you still have access to your sword and you can draw. If it was the other way around, it would be a little bit less practical to disengage your hips to draw. One detail I want to add uh, in terms of kneeling down and going back up, when you bring that leg back, you have to remain with your toes in kisa. Kisa, it means the, the toes are flexed upon the, the ground like this. So knee down, second knee like this, and then only then do you flatten your feet. When you go back up, same but opposite. Kisa, right knee, left knee, and back in that standard position. So once again, left knee down, right knee down, and down. When you get back up, it's the same opposite. You will, again, you will raise this knee first for the same reason that you want to uh, retain access to your sword, and then you're gonna rise the second knee up and bring your heels back together and stand straight. So that is for going up and down. So once you're sitting like this, you're going to sit with your back straight like this, and your shoulders relaxed down, and the idea is something is pulling the top of your head upwards, and you're nice and comfortable sitting on your buttocks straight. So the hands position should not be hanging like this. It should be on your knees, and the thumbs here should be connecting with your belt. What's going to happen is that your elbows may tend to stick out a bit. You don't want that to happen, because the danger is that somebody could cut your uh, arms, or it's quite rude if you're standing in a line to have your elbows poking in people's side. So you're going to put your hands like so and avoid having your elbows sticking out, elbows like this, back straight. That's the default position. Uh, of course, uh, sitting like this on the knees can be a little bit uncomfortable at the beginning, but with practice you should, go, should grow quite comfortable doing so. Save some pins and needles after a while but for the back is actually quite good because the back is really straight. One more detail. Um, in some schools, the position of the knees will be different. Now, generally, the idea is that you leave two 
fists between your knees. Or one fist for women. Uh, it's both, both uh, cultural thing and also the fact that uh, women tend to wear a kimono, which of course limits the width of the, of the knees. Whereas males wear the hakama, which has two legs separate, the horse riding hakama, which allows having a bit more spread. Some schools actually let you sit like this, much more wide, and for technical reasons, which I'm not going to go uh, into. In terms of the position of the feet, you can sit like this with both feet side by side. Some people will argue that this allows you to move your feet, even if somebody crushes one of your feet, you can actually get up more easily. Others will advise you to sit like this with the big toe on top of the uh, other one. And other people will actually send, sit like this completely one foot on top of the other. Now, it's really up to your personal preferences what you do, whichever you're more comfortable. Personally, depending on how flexible I am on that day, I might sit like this or like this, depending on how do I feel in terms of comfort. Now, how do we bow? There are different ways to bow, and I'm going to show you two ways. One is more formal, the other uh, is a little bit more casual, but it's actually the one I use, and I'll explain to you why. So the formal way will be, you're going to bring your hands in a triangle like this, in front of you, and bow like this. Now, for the formal way, you're gonna bring the left hand first, followed by the right hand, and then you're going to bow with your nose going in that triangle. Now the reason why you bring the left hand first is a safety check. As you bow and you're facing people that you do not necessarily trust 100%, you're going to bring that hand down and you're going to check using your peripheral vision what's happening around you and is it safe to bring down the second arm and go down. Why the left arm? Because the left arm is less important in the sense that this is the right arm that's going to grab your sword. So by sticking out like this, it could potentially be cut. You prefer to offer your left arm than the more important right arm, okay? So left arm first, look, peripheral vision, safety check, second hand like this, triangle, and then down like this. When you go back up, right hand, left hand, and straight. Okay, so once again, left, right, down, one, two, right, left. Now, I've said that this is the tradition, not the tradition, excuse me, the formal way. Because we're doing Aikido, which is a Gendai Budo, which is uh, something which is in nature more peaceful than the arts of war of the old times, we tend to bow like this. Both hands at the same time. One, two, back up, both hands at the same time. Now what it means is that I am no longer doing a safety check in front of you. There is a sense of implicit trust in the person or persons who are facing me. So that's what I tend to do when I'm in seminars, for example, when I'm teaching, because I would like to signify that trust to the people that come to see me, because we are in Aikido, again, in a Gendai Budo, a Ningen Kese no Michi, a way to become better human beings. So I explain that to you through my emotions by not doing that safety check. Now, formally speaking, what usually happens is that the teacher will do that safety check in front of his students, because there is so much that he can trust his students. However, the students in return will not. They will bow like this, to show their full commitment to the teacher. The other time is when you bow to the showman or the kamiza. Because when you bow to those, you're showing your respect to the dojo, you're showing the respect to the founder of the art, potentially to the kami, the, the, the spirits. So you do not perform that safety check when you're bowing to the wall of honor of your dojo, okay? So now you know how to do both, you can pick which one you decide to do according to the circumstances. Ideally, when you bow, you do not want to round your back like this, okay? And the nose has to go straight down. You neither look ahead of you, nor do you actually put your head in. And you try not to lift uh, your buttocks too much. 
some schools will show you that instead of putting your hands like this flat in a triangle, they will do that sort of shape here. Now, it's interesting. They argue that having that shape like this will prevent somebody who might push on your head, prevent them from breaking your nose or, or, or preventing you to breathe, having that, that shape. Again, uh, when I bow, I keep my hands flat because for the sense that I am not doing that safety measure. Same reason, because we're doing again Dai Budo. Another thing that teachers have to consider is that they have to bow to both the showmen and the students. So they're going to have to rotate their hips. Now, to avoid having too much of a sloppy motion, you uh, may have to consider how to move your knees. And I'm going to show you how. So if you're going to turn towards the showman, one thing you can do, you can raise the right knee like so. And then you use that knee and it's going to go and chase the left knee like this. You raise the left knee and then you bring it down and you can sit in front of the showman and do your bow. When you're done, you raise the right knee again, chase the left knee like so, bring the left knee down and back towards your students and you bow. So this covers the basics of standing, kneeling and bowing. And I hope it helps you when you practice in your dojo.